Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Stranger Things 3, Volume 3, actually no, it's Chapter 3, <laughs> not Volume, <laughs> Volumes Till to Die Young, Chapter 3, The Case of the Missing Lifeguard, so full spoilers we'll there, for the episode, as always. So, uh, I was really into this episode, I'll just start off by saying that, I feel like one of the things that I said after episode one is that I expected like one other set of characters to be in the mystery, and then episode three I expected had another group, and that's essentially what's happened. That you know, in this episode, almost everyone, barring the young boys, until the very end of the episode, um, are yeah, in on investigating. Dustin. It's good and Dustin, of course, is working with uh with with Steve and and Robin, um, which by the way I did notice that they are the co- she has the combination of Emma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. It was more clear now. Looking after, for after we someone mentioned it to us between episodes, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't miss it now, can you? Yeah. Uh, so no, this episode starts with L and and uh, Max. They're in her bedroom, and you know some stuff. But that, you know, talking about the boys and you know, uh, Ralph Macchio is a hot young hot young lad at the time. Sounds about right. Karate Kid, of course. Uh, I was fond of the movie growing up. Um, I think many people my age were. Um, mm. Have you seen that? Yeah, of course I have. What do you mean, do you of course remember? you have? Of course you have. Because, because we've spoken about this. We, we spoke about this quite a bit before the uh, the YouTube show started. Yeah, I remember talking about it. I don't remember what you said about it, though. <laughs> well, I, that's on you. I remember We talk about a lot of things, okay? I remember topics that we have. I don't necessarily remember everything we say about something. It's unacceptable. But yeah, so, so L's all like, oh... They can correct it, chop me anytime, kind of, kind of attitude. Uh, but then she's like, "Is make a good kiss?" And she's like, oh, "I don't really know, no comparison, kind of thing." Um, and she's get, she kind of like, "Oh, like you know," because Max reminds her, "Oh, you know, ex boyfriend." And she's like, "Uh," he's like, "Oh, don't worry, he's going to come crawling back," which again reiterates the idea that she didn't really want to dump him permanently. This was just a tactic to make yeah, him yeah. come groveling. And she's like, "Ah, oh, I'm sure they're over there now," kind of. Worrying about what they're gonna do to make it. Up yes, to you. and then something extremely unhealthy starts, which is the worst thing. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm not blaming her. She's a teen girl. I get why she uses her powers this way. I'm saying that as someone with a little bit of life experience, this is the most unhealthy thing. This is like stalking your ex on Facebook. You just don't do it. It's a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bad idea. Now, admittedly, they didn't go for the cheap drama because I really thought they were going to like, oh, they're going to just happen to say the exact wrong thing as she's spying on them, going, you know, going through the. Uh, what did we call this? I can't remember what we called this. I don't. Did we have a name for it? I feel. I feel it. Like I want to say the further, but that's the that's the place in the insidious when they go <laughs> when they go, when they go yeah. into the sleep. Um, but you know, when she's walking on the and the, the black all black and it's the water and she's seeing yeah. she's spying on someone at that that time. Um and you know they're just, they're on the couch and the you know makes just saying oh well, I don't know what I did wrong like come on I'm being I feel like I'm being punished here this feels awful and he's not saying anything too bad nothing too great either it's not like he's saying all the right things but he's not saying anything too yeah, coming Luke's in just, I mean he, he puts foot in it a little bit looks he's like you didn't do anything wrong it's fine oh yeah and he's like anyway like oh they're just emotional not logical y- yeah they're basically having the cliche dumb guy conversation about women which I'm convinced. Like, I mean, I'm okay with them using it because obviously this is playing on all 80s tropes. But I, I mean, may, maybe dumber guys have this conversation. But I have never in my life experienced guys actually having a conversation about women being illogical and too emotional. It feels like such a movie and TV trope to me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to recall if I ever have. It's it's, it's such a stereotype. I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel like at least most intelligent men never actually think this. Never actually sit and go, oh yeah. I mean, I'm not saying there's no difference between men and women. I'm just saying... I think, I think to be fair, though, when it does come up, and even here, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily meant. I think, you know, Lucas is just trying to say oh, sure, it to cheer yeah. him up. Like, hey, you know, like, yeah, they're just... A, well, they're just a, they're also, in, in this case, they're, you know, they're like 15. Like, I mean, they're, they're idiots, right? Yeah, they don't <laughs> you know, know any better. In the grand scheme, they're idiots, so, I mean, it's fine. They're just trying to yeah. explain it to themselves. Um... But instead, you know, like, you know, Lucas or Will burps, right? And it's, it's, no, it's Mike that burps. It's Mike that burps. Yeah. And, and, and Lucas Luke tops burps. it. He's like, well, no, yeah. I'm about to top it. And then he just lets it rip and he goes for a big fart. And it's exactly the sort of thing. Like, yep, that's teenage boys. Yeah. They would never do it in front of the girls. And 
Elle just looks kind of horrified, and then she comes out of it, takes off the blindfold, and just starts laughing. It's like a fit of laughter. And what I liked about this is that it didn't do the obvious thing where she's going to hear him say something that sounds nasty out of context, and she's going to be even feel worse about it. No, it w- it wasn't something great, but it wasn't terrible, like you say. No, it was basically just no, they're silly idiot boys, and I can laugh about that. And if it, it felt good to me that that was what the outcome of the scene was, it was like no, this just felt like a f- bit of fun as opposed to we're going to yeah. do the the drama thing um hopper comes home and he's pissed about being stood up and he sees the door shut and, and, and also still actually pissed in the drunk sense in the drunk sense yes well you have to explain that because it's a very british that's, thing that's that's why i did yes. explain it yes because pissed in other places just means angry uh pissed yeah. in this sense that we're using it is as drunk and he comes in i said three inches minimum and he you know he slams the door open and it's max that's lying there whether you know just reading magazines whatever they're doing and he's like, oh, oh, uh, uh, and he's he's totally like, caught off guard, and it's like, They're like, we're just gonna have a sleepover, I, is I, that all right? I, you know, I thought, I thought, I thought, and then Max actually cuts him off and says, yeah, Mike's not here, uh, and then that's when they all like sleep over. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, do your parents know? But oh, cool, 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 cool. I'll I'll, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> and he then, walks out the door and just uh, grins. Yeah, he almost he's like, you know what? I'm pissed about the date thing. In this case, I mean angry. <laughs> but um, he, he sits down, he takes his shoes off, he keeps drinking, watching TV. He's in a good mood because he is. Now, now she's spending time with a girlfriend and he's all happy. So here we go. Um, but this leads to the girls playing a game where it's like, hey, this shows your power to spy on other people. And again, very unhealthy, very, you know, morally. And again you would wouldn't you yeah yeah morally this is questionable um and i love how they say the teacher's too boring uh you know scott or whatever his name is i love how they say he's too boring but they land on her brother billy and go oh yeah you, this might be you may see him with a girl if you do just opt out but i'm like well, but this is more interesting of course for plot reasons we have to go through with this because this is what leads them on the scent um yeah because she goes in and she just sees Billy kneeling down. She hears some weird noises. She sort of walks closer to him. And when Billy turns around, he can sense her. You know, it's, it's, this is... Yeah, even more, like, directly than we've ever seen before. He yeah. Outright sees her. Um, because we see a little bit from his perspective and he sees a bit of a shimmer. Yeah, and I, that's what I liked about it. I like that they actually bring up the make sense there once. But that was like... Because obviously that was more of an emotional connection. Like, it was just so strong that he could kind of sense her. And that was kind of sweet at the time. Whereas this was more unsettling. This was like, no, he knows I'm here. Yeah. Um, and that sets him okay. Sums up your brother. Because she also sees the car kind of as if it's been been abandoned as well. Yeah, and here's the screams. Yeah, and here's the screams. So, and this sets him up. And I, I, I love this pacing of this season so far, where it has kind of naturally brought in each group of characters, sort of one by one, into the mystery and from a different angle. Um, Do you know what I think might be the single best thing about this season so far? Yes. That the utter dick bag that is billy is the villain no that's perfect I, and i think this was always like something they knew they were going to do is they made us hate him in season two and then it's like no we're going to make him the face of the monster in season three because because we don't need to hate the monster really i mean it, i mean obviously he's doing terrible things so we, we would anyway but we already hate this guy yeah we hate the monster in the same way that you hate the the, the, the xenomorph or you hate the the creature on the thing but you don't like personally yeah. hate him you know it's not like a personal thing but Billy's personal. <laughs> yeah, with the with the monster, it's more of a it's a horrific thing that they're committing these things. But they're a monster. It's kind of in the in the MO. That said, that said, it's because of the end of last season. It's a bit more like the Alien Queen now. You know, the aliens where it becomes more personal with Ripley because she destroys the nest, so the Queen's pissed. Yeah. And so it's a bit more like that now, where it is a little bit personal. Like there, there is a bit of that there. No, it is, but never as much as we would have got by just well, we hate Billy. Yeah. Um, yeah, because by the end of the episode, it's very clear that the the entity of this monster is actually what's inside Billy, like as he recognises yeah. Eleven closing the gate. Um, you know when we finally see him, but this I leaves them that goth outfit. <laughs> but this leaves them on the chase, so they go back to Max's house, they check out his room, and you know find porn magazines and whatever else. But it's in the in the the, the bathroom, and they find weird, like, you know, ice in the bathtub, and you know Max thinks maybe some fitness thing. Which, no, that's plausible enough, right? Yeah. She says, oh, he works out a lot, you know. Oh, yeah, it's not so that weird, yeah. Bad. Sure, you can write that off. 
Yeah, you can write that off. All the blood on the belongings inside the cabinet, however, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. Really write those off. Especially since it's like clear that this thing, this this particular lifeguard pouch doesn't belong to him. You know, it's not something he's ever been seen with. So, like, okay, who's this belong to? So, and I, I love that this is a rainy summer day, by the way. It completely changes the tone from the last two episodes. Uh, yeah. You know, pools closed, everything's pissing uh, rain. As an Englishman, this is what I'm used to. <laughs> you see, it's been pretty warm recently. Let's be honest. Uh, I mean, it's been raining for the last three hours here. Uh, hasn't been here, but okay. <laughs> you say that it's been warm for like a week. It was raining for the like two weeks before. Yeah, but we have su- sunny patches. It happens. <laughs> we get like three or four days of summer, and then ah, that's it. No, it comes back a few times because I'm usually miserable about it, which is why I know it's more than that. But yeah. pe- pe- people love to complain. Oh, it's always raining. But yeah, it does on and off. But there's still sunny days in between. <laughs> <laughs> There's sunny days in between all the rain. It's <laughs> fine. Axe <laughs> war. No, 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 no. Better rain never hurt, hurt anyone. Um, so they go to the the pool, and the staff there are not very helpful. They're just ah, oh, neither of them came in today. The the bastards. Um, but Eleven gets a photo. There's like staff photos on the wall, and yep. she she pulls a photo of uh, of uh, El- of Elizabeth. That was intentional. For anyone I know, I know it was. If anyone doesn't know why I did that, uh, there's a character on Dark Season 2 that we just finished uh, called Elizabeth, who for some reason I called Heather like five times, uh, despite that. So uh, I'm intentionally cracking a joke about mistaking Heather for Elizabeth here. Yeah. Uh, That's why I jumped in with the name. It's, it's probably the only reason I remember the name. To be honest <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's the only reason why I remember the name is because I, I immediately <laughs> thought, oh, Elizabeth. <laughs> and I jumped in with it. It was just like, don't want you to mistake it. It's Heather. <laughs> <laughs> So they go to the uh, the shower room, turn all the showers to sort of mimic the static, you know, similar sort of blank noise, and she she tries to find her with the photo. And again, we we see like going through a red door, which actually makes me think of Insidious. Now that I, now that I brought it up earlier with the the father, yeah. uh, but she fe- you know she jumps out of the the cold bathtub, you know. Yeah, but she gets in a dress as well. Yeah. So uh, they get yeah the the, the her house, uh, and we actually. When they get when they get there at the end, the girls get there. We find out that uh, Heather's dad is actually the 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 editor, the chief, whatever his rank is at the the newspaper that Mansi works at. Yeah. And what's beautiful about that is it's really smart writing. Where earlier on, they almost play like he's going to be the one guy in the room that isn't a dick to Nancy, but then he's the biggest dick in the room to Nancy. So it's really neat just to make us not feel that bad because we're not ready to like really be have our hearts torn out about who he's killing yet. So it's just like, no, here's some, like, red shirt fodder that you, you kind of dislike. You know, you hate yeah. him. But it also, it's smart because, well, he's going to be body snatched. So the next time Nancy pitches this yeah, thing, yeah. that'll be to do with the rats. And it won't be just shutting it down as a joke now. He'll be like, no, she's on to us. Yeah, it really, yeah. Because, I mean, they're already further into the plot anyway, just from their perspective. But that also ties it more into the plot in other ways that weren't, you know. So it's really smart yeah. writing how it's connecting these things together. Um. So yeah, they go they go over to the house and Billy's there with the parents and it's like, why is he with these two parents? This is weird. And he's acting all kind of playing it cool. You know, he doesn't seem out of it like he did before. It seems like he's you know he's he's become more assimilated to the the new entity kind of thing. Yeah, he's playing it very uh, suave. He's playing you know mm-hmm. the the boyfriend of for dinner. Yeah, and you know when Eleven's just like, where is she? And you know he he's very coy. He's, he's very like, oh, this is my sister Maxine. She's a bit weird. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. And she's like L. And he's like L. Is it? And it, but it's this more. It's like oh, she's meeting like the villains meeting the hero properly for the first time, kind of moment. You know? Yeah. Uh, and out walks Heather. You know, she's been baking cookies, and it's like. So I mean, obviously, we guessed last episode that she was also going to be taken over, like Billy was uh, when she had the thing in her face. But uh, you know, the kids kind of reluctantly leave, not really trusting like what's going on here that like, something no, seems off it's like well if, if, there's not really anything we can do if she is there so yeah we go. but then uh the mother starts you know f- you know passes out from whatever they've drugged her with the dad starts getting upset he'll call 911 and that's when the, you know heather just hits him over the head with a vase or Wine whatever bottle. it was yeah uh and then also chloroforms him and we end the episode with you know american pie playing yeah, and uh, two more for the body snatches. Two more for the body snatches, indeed. Um, I love how we started and end with this plot as well. I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking about that, but just because we're talking about this plot line first, it actually does start and end the episode. Yeah, it end. does. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, which is traditionally where you one. have, which is traditionally where you have the start and the end of the episode at either end. <laughs> 
It is. Just not always the same plot. Yeah, it's just not always the same plot. Uh, so no, uh, really, really great plot, and it's, it's, it was funny to bring them into it on their own, and the idea of like El's powers leading them to this place uh, just by chance. It didn't feel like forced. It didn't feel like super, like you know, contrived. It just felt nice. Yeah, it was. Hey, you know, let's spy on people we know. Why yeah. wouldn't they? Oh, they happened to stumble across the, him doing weird stuff, which we know he was doing. So sure, it, it kind of all lines up plausibly enough. And it also just reestablishes Elle as something of a hero because as soon as she thinks someone's in trouble, you know, when she comes over and she's like, where is she? Like, you know, she's not messing around. Like, she, she's there to try and help whoever's in trouble. She is, yeah. So it, it does a little bit of character work for her too. Uh, as well as giving them more bonding stuff. I love that they're playing with the combinations of characters here because obviously we love Dustin and Steve last season. They brought that back because it was so good and the Ryan and Robin, obviously. But I love that we're, we're playing with Max and Elle this season. And like, no, these two can be a pair now and it's actually really enjoyable. Uh, it is. I, so. I I think the the Dustin Stephen Robin still might be my favorite combination. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I mean it's arguably the most fun. We'll we'll jump to that next because, you know, she's still trying to like translate and figure out the code. You know, that's the, the code. And she's in the place. Erica comes by for more samples, and she's like, "Piss off! You're not getting any more samples." <laughs> Screw you! You've abused it. Yeah, you've abused the system. And she's like, "Where's Sailor Man? Thinking she can abuse him instead? <laughs> like he's going to fall? You know, fall for it? So just he's not it. here right now." Yeah why spy craft and i love that the camera work here really makes this because it tracks into her face as she says that and then it cuts to like you know one of the bushes in the center of the mall and it's just and him with binoculars yeah. yeah and it's the not beat music's playing and he's looking around the mall and i love i i love how they're using the mall in this season because like not only have we been using the the after hours mall stuff that i'm sure we're going to get more of later but just the um this idea of like someone in the mall is a spy and we have to find them it it reminds me of kids movies that i like you know it reminds me of that feeling of like you know something the adults don't and you're trying to take yeah. it seriously and you know and they have a fun conversation here where where dustin's uh saying hey why are you so upset about girls you've got a perfect one right in front of you because you know like we were saying oh they're going to end up together you know steve and robin are going to end up together um and no the fact they're addressing it so early makes me think maybe not <laughs> Well, it may, they may not actually go through with it, but the fact, like, someone said in the comments that they didn't think it was going to happen after that first episode. So the fact that they're actually playing with it at least vindicates me <laughs> because they're not just, you know, mm. there's something to it, right? Um, uh, I actually think they still are, mainly because of the hand-holding later. I feel like they're just going to go down this path. They're, they're, I feel like we're going straight down this. No, yeah, fair enough. Uh, no swerves. Um, or at least... I'm expecting, I'm expecting a swerve. If there's going to be a I swerve... I wasn't, I, I wasn't after the first episode, but I am now. If there's going to be a swerve, I think it'll be a little kiss and just be like, you know what, I don't really feel the earth thing about this. And yeah, yeah, me neither. And they'll just go back to like being themselves. But I don't think there's going to be a swerve and that they're going to... You know, like, I, I still think we're playing, playing it out. Like, if, if there's going to be a that this isn't happening, it'll happen after we've sort of culminated it, if that makes sense. Mm, we'll see. I'm not sure anymore. Okay. Um... But they're looking for Russians, um, and St St <laughs> Steve's like, oh, yeah, 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 you're trying to give me advice on girls. Uh, how did you get this Phoebe Cates, you know, lookalike? Oh, yeah, with my advice. So, listen up. I'm the one who gives advice. You're the one who takes it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're looking for tall blondes uh, with duffel bags. <laughs> Maybe we'll be wearing camo. Maybe wearing camo. And, of course, when we come back to them later, they have found such a person. And they follow him, and I love this because he looks so suspicious. And they're like, they're they're stalking him, and like they hide. You know, Dustin grabs the payphone, and he's like, "And it's yes, I uh, I will feed there." Yes, <laughs> how are you? I am Faye. <laughs> yes. And it turns out he's just some like jazz size inst instructor. Yeah, yeah, some stupid eighties fan. You know, you know how we were talking about how like malls have changed. I I said, you know, my mall's got quite a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. I was in I was in there today by happenstance. Oh, there you go. This, I completely forgot there is a car store in mine. <laughs> There's a car store inside the mall? There is a Mercedes store inside my mall. That's a weird place for a car car dealership. It, it is. Yeah, yeah also, it's, it's, a, it's a dealership, not a store. The <laughs> car store. It, you're right. But I, I say store because it has all the merch as well. Okay, so it's okay. Part store, part, part like showroom, part dealership. <laughs> it's not like a huge, you know, open thing. It's like, okay, we've got a couple of models. <laughs> Where did, where, did, where did NASA get the rockets? The rocket store. Well, it's not a rocket dealership. 
<laughs> it's frankly the answer's NASA and nothing else. Where did you buy your house? The house shop. <laughs> I went and had a deal on duplexes. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> not a realtor. No. <laughs> No, that's not. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, Robin turned out to be the brains of the operation. Um, I mean, a little bit of I'm luck. I'm shocked, I tell you. A little bit of luck involved as well, though, because she's still trying to decode it, and she gets, like, a, you know, chap at the back door, and it's, you know, delivery for the store, and she notices this this delivery company's, uh, like, a Lynx, and it's, like, a silver cat on the back, and she's like, silver cat. And then she runs out into the middle of the mall and starts looking around for things that might coincide with the other clues. And there's, there's various stores that kind of line up with some of the words. Yeah, it, it, there was one about like, oh, you know, uh, the t- you know, uh, something about China. So, oh, there's a Chinese food place. Yeah. And then the main one, the important one at the end, uh, the time, it's like when blue and yellow meet in the West and it's like the clock's hands are blue and yellow and they're like, ah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's going to be like, you know, what, quarter to nine or whatever. Like whatever the yep. time would give be. Or take. But I, I assume just before, given how uh, clocks work. Yeah, there has to be but, a moment where they're overlapping. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Whatever. The point is, they can ballpark it enough that they can they can do some surveillance because, of course, that's what they so do. They get up on the roof. Yeah, pouring rain. They got binoculars, and of course, Dustin and Steve start fighting over the binoculars, and they make a noise, which means the big guys with the machine guns take notice. <laughs> Which is where Robin and Steve uh, uh, find themselves holding hands and like sort of go, oh, we're holding hands and you know back away, kind of thing. Um, greatest love story of oh, our time. Fun, isn't it? Yeah, no, this is this is delightful. All of this is delightful. Um, I love it. Uh, I love it dearly. Um, all all the upbeat music is the like spying in the mall. Um, you know the 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 three hundred and sixty camera going around Robin and she's looking around everything. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. it's cutting in and out of it as it's looking to the the cutaways of the actual store she's looking at. But it's just this like slow spinning camera around her, and it just it, yeah, it's great. They're really using that space uh, to make it feel alive uh, this season, and it's making it a really fun place to hang out. Um, and obviously, like you say, we're, we're three for three on Erica in the mall. We are, we are. Um, and I think how's she going to be there after hours? <laughs> well, when I was get when I was loading up the IMDb page in case I need names or just getting the title of the episode. Um, I believe I did see an image of her wearing like a helmet, so she's getting in the action at some point. <laughs> she's fighting she something. Stayed, stayed after hours to steal some ice cream. Er- Erica's fighting the Russians. I'm calling it now. She's going to be the MVP. Probably. Probably, yeah. Uh, so that was that was their plot. Uh, they confirmed that there's shady stuff going on. They've got like hard, like they've seen something properly suspicious outside of anything else. Like, up until now, it was a fun game. It was like, oh, maybe those Russians happening. Um, but now they've actually seen it and they've, yep. they've, they've felt threatened um, so meanwhile we'll jump over to the boys who don't have as again they're the one plot that doesn't have a tie to the main like story or mystery until the very end when Will kind of you know depends how big a tie you really count the, the Joyce and Hopper stuff oh I would because I, th- I think it's going to tie into everything I mean it's it's kind of a separate mystery but they're definitely going yeah, down that path it's, it's leading them kind of tangentially into that path but I would still count that in, in the sense that they're not just doing like like rom-com stuff random they're, stuff yeah, yeah they're sure. they're working on something um, but the, the boys like they wake up after that farting you know spying scene and you know, the next morning and Will's got his costume on he's like you know refer to me by my full name so Will the ways and he's like, okay, we're going to play this campaign. He's got music. He's got a soundtrack for his D and D campaign. He's all excited. He's looking forward to this, and they kind of reluctantly go, okay, sure. And they're, they're, they're playing D and D, and then their, their heart's not really in it as they're playing. You know, well bless them. He's he's trying to be theatrical. He's rolling the dice. He's like, oh, and the the monster takes off your arm, and blah blah blah. Um, and then the phone rings, and he's like, oh, please don't answer. And both Lucas and and Mike just jump oh, at the phone. Yeah. Uh and it turns out to be a tele- telemarketer or it's no one. Um and you know, I I want to give this episode credit because this is easily the most sympathetic I've felt for Will, I think, in the entire show. Yeah, I said last episode I was feeling bad for him because he was clearly left behind everyone else. Yeah, and I, but I think like it almost felt like I wasn't convinced they were going to do something with it last episode, you know, to the extent where this episode I feel like really actually got into it. So, no no like 
they have been kind of just dissing him and ignoring him uh, this yeah. this summer because they've both got girlfriends and he gets kind of frustrated because he's like, oh, we're just not in the mood. And he's like, yeah, that's the problem. You're never in the mood. Like, you're always just wanting to be with girlfriends uh, and kind of leaving me high and dry kind of thing. And, you know, Mike, you know, and I don't think Mike's trying to be a dick. He says some things that kind of come out dickish. But... Yeah, I think um, I think there's a line that, that's very telling of something that's going to happen. Are you going to say that because he says it's not my fault you're not into girls that we're going down uh, well being gay? Is that what you're? I do. I think given his reaction, yeah, I think because he has a reaction, and then uh, Mike's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that," and it's kind of like maybe they both already know, and it's just kind of been unspoken. You may be, you, you may be right because I, I mean I, I considered that as well when he said it. I, I think. I think that's the obvious sort of face value read of it is that it might be hinting that he's gay uh, and we might have to, you know, we might deal with that and that could be a good plot to go down. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think that's something interesting mm-hmm. to deal with. Um, at the same time, though, I, I think given what he's went through and the trauma he's went through, that he's just, like, he, he's still dealing with that. He's kind of yeah. held back in that sense. And you could argue that he's just, he's just genuinely not into that yet. Like, he's just genuinely still a kid in his mind. Yeah, no, I, I was. Uh, yeah. I think I was saying that last episode that um, you know, between all the stuff he's gone through, he's just not moved on. You know, yeah. you know mentally, he's not um, matured with them because he missed time, so he still feels like you no, know, he's got to get that time Which, back. By the way, soon we get the flashbacks to the first episode of season one. I'm like, okay, now I'm noticing how much older they've got <laughs> in the past two, yeah. two, three years. Yeah, they look tiny in that flashback. <laughs> They do, don't they? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> um, man, time's a time's a fickle bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but you no, know, like so, but this scene when he's arguing with Mike in the rain as he's about to ride off on his bike, like I actually, for the first time, I really felt like, okay, I really sympathise with with, and I don't blame Mike and Lucas because they're doing the natural thing that you know they're naturally they're, they've become interested in these girls that and you know they have. Like, you know, we, we've always been on board with Mike and Elle's relationship. They've always had this sweet thing that we've been rooting for. But, like, you kind of really get his place. You get that, that idea that he has been left behind. And yeah. um, I fell for him in this episode. And he, he rides off. He doesn't go home. He goes to his old fort. He's looking at all these old photos, which leads to the flashbacks. And he smashes it up. He's like, no, like, screw this. This is dumb kid shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm breaking yeah. this apart. Um, and when the kids find him later on, because they go, they go and try and find him at the house, and then they, they find him out here eventually at the end, and he's feeling the, you know the back of his neck again. He gets the tingle. He gets the, he gets the Peter tingle, um, and he he turns around and he says he's back. And what I like about this compared to season two is that in season two, and this is not a complaint about season two, but I think the natural thing to do here that I like for season three. Is that he's not going? To, we're not going to spend the season with him not knowing what's wrong with them, you know, being scared that something weird's happening. He just instantly understands that no, the bad guy is back, and he understands what that feels like now, and he's it able to is, process it. My immediate question is: Do they believe him straight away, or do they think, "Oh, he's just doing this so we'll spend time with him"? Oh, they they could do that. Um, I think going from the image on netflix for the next episode where it seems like the, the boys and the girls have been reunited i feel like combined with the girl's story that's probably not going to be uh, okay fair enough i concern. was assuming that i hadn't seen that image so i was thinking maybe they're a bit more separate still yeah. and I, I could see them playing that angle when you, when I mean, you it wouldn't be drawn out forever yeah. obviously when you're watching the ps4 you always get this image for the next episode at the end so i can't not see it <laughs> yeah, de- desktop app doesn't do that yeah so all my tv app for that matter um so you know but i like that he's a bit more proactive here where it's like no we have to deal with this and fight back there's you know it's, it's not him doubting himself it's not him trying to suppress it he just this accepts that this is what this means and we have to gear up and fight back um well not that's his attitude next episode i'm not sure but at least him just acknowledging it and saying no look this thing is back and we have to we have to deal with it i like i like that 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 development so uh mm. that's good um hopper and joyce and um, we'll jump over to next um yeah and joe it's funny is that like you know arguably they've been kind of on the outside for the most part doing this rom-com stuff i actually love their opening so obviously hopper's there before with the kids but when joyce comes over not even thinking about the fact that she stood him up and he's just he's, and he's tall with his shirt on because he's yeah. out the shower and she's just going around like hopper look at this look at these magnets and she's like trying to like throw him at his fridge <laughs> and she's like look i've lost the magnetism like, what the hell are you chatting shit about yeah 
and you know eventually she's like okay so so you know this was weird and it happened at my house too and he says so i went over to scott's house and he's like who's scott <laughs> it's like you know scott scott clark or whatever his name is like the, the kid's teacher hmm you went to his house uh, it's like yeah yeah he's, he's quite brilliant actually he's like hmm <laughs> that's it i love his reaction to that sentence he's quite brilliant it's, actually it's great. Yeah. um and i love how he just he eventually outbursts and he's like so you stood me up left me at the restaurant i've not been stood up like that since ninth grade and he just he goes on a run and she's like no listen to me this is important this is important damn it and he, you know, he's getting low and he goes behind the curtain and he's getting dressed and she's like, no, I think it's them. I, th- I think it's in the lab. You know, that's big device. Like, th- it'd have to be that funding. It'd have to be this big, this operation to, to pull this off. And he's like, no, I think you're just inventing things so you can focus things on, on things so you're not having to deal with your, your emotions and move yeah. on. You know, all that kind of and argument. The best bit for me here is when he goes, you just want to go back there and check it out. And, and she's like, yeah, I do. You, well, you can take me there. And he goes, <laughs> okay, this is important. How about I- I'll meet you there at seven? Unless something comes up. And it definitely will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that killed me. That no. really killed me. Because I was generally upset for him when he did get stood up last episode. So I'm glad that this very quickly made it funny. And like, it's still there. The drama's still there, but it wasn't making it feel us feel awkward for it, which I like. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she's not there when he gets out the curtain. So he storms out half-dressed and she comes out of his little shed holding some, you know, uh, uh bolt cars and uh a flashlight and he's like she's like i'm borrowing these <laughs> <laughs> he's like joyce <laughs> and he's like hopping after her, trying to put his boots on in the rain yeah. trying to run after her at the same time so they go to the place um and she has an emotional moment where they're in the lobby where bob died and she kind of you know zones out and he kind of understands what's happening here and he's, he's trying to you know you know approach it kind of sensibly uh they eventually get down to where the gate was and you know yeah, it's been it's been like filled in nothing here yeah it's been filled in with concrete and you know he, he tries to talk to her and this is where we find out that she's actually put her house up for sale she wants to move out of the town and he's like oh, i didn't think i'd find out about that did you um and tries to convince her that people here care about her and she cracks a little joke which is like oh you mean like scott and he just gives her this look and she's like that was a joke <laughs> like she knows she knows it's him talking about himself and he's yeah. like oh. uh but of course the baker the baker appears. We hear a noise. Oh, we'll For now, yeah, he's the baker. He's the Russian baker. Sure. Uh, and, you know, there's a little bit of a suspense scene where Hopper's going around and eventually runs into But this guy is a trained fighter and Hopper's kind of outmatched. He is, yeah. He's, he's really struggling. Yeah. Uh, Joyce finds him out cold uh, on, on the ground and she sees the baker just kind of ride off into the night kind of thing. So they're clearly getting close to something. Yeah. So- and the question is, though, was he following Hopper and came here after, mm. or was he here already? That's an excellent question. Because we do hear, you know, they're wandering around downstairs for a while, and then we hear noises investigate. I which... have, to, I have to wonder if he was there, trying to like because if if they're like stealing ideas from this this company that this lab that was doing this yeah. stuff before, was he there to like get more intel or whatever, whatever he could scrounge up? possibly yeah. um also i like the story actually that hopper mentioned about how he almost shot a dog because he you know he thought it was he one of those a, yeah. yeah one of those mini demic organs uh, yeah, demi dogs no, 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 demi dogs that's what we call them yeah, yeah. That, that was a good thing he was like you know, it, he's got that that ptsd as well it's just not showing it as much yeah and I, I like how he's trying to share about how he how he lost his own family you know um to try and yeah. like connect to joys like you know all this stuff was playing out really well but it did have this funny this funny chemistry between them as well throughout the whole thing it so did. um you know so far i think i think we're what four for four on the plots uh or three for three whatever many we've talked about <laughs> i can't remember three, uh ellen max the boys Steve robin and the boys so this is four so this is four yeah and then we yeah. should touch no. on nancy yes nancy and jonathan who gets laughed out of the room. Yeah, we mentioned that the boss kind of like is the worst. And it's like, no, do your job. Tell us, you know, about the phone calls. They make fun of her. And, you know, Jonathan sees this. He tries to console her. But she's like, you know what? No, there's something going on here. I'm going to go look into this. Um, and We're he, getting proof. Let's go get that damn rat. Yeah, and he doesn't want to. She's like, okay, fine. I understand. Give me your keys. And he's like, you're really persistent. And he's like, okay, I'll come. 
So they go back to the woman's house and they, they, they break in. I mean, it's, I mean, the door's unlocked, but it's still breaking in. <laughs> but it, he's like, we should be doing this. She's like, but what if she's fallen? That, no, that's, like, just... that's like every scene in a movie where the police officer's like, oh, probable cause, she might be in, in, in peril. Let's just go yeah. That's it. It's like, but what if she's fallen? You know, it's it's wet and it's cold and we're not hearing anything, so we should, we should do our civic duty and check on it. It turns out the rat's either infected or possessed her because she's now eating the fertilizer uh, or the yeah. pesticide, whatever one she had, <laughs> and she's all feral. So Yeah. And, uh, it's interesting to see that they are like that at first, isn't it? So, you know, before they settle into the body snatch phase, you've got a period where they're weaker. Do you think she's going to do that, though? Or do you think this is like going to be like a separate kind of breed to what, like... Uh... Uh, no, I suspect she would settle in because uh, I think Billy did a similar sort of thing. Maybe not as outright feral, but, True. you know, where he was manic, he was out of it. He was uh, he went for the, the chemicals, <clears> you know... Um, and then presumably he has the ice bath that settles him down. Something about the ice bath settles them because we know uh, we saw Heather in, in the in the bath as well. I wonder if that's a one time thing, or do they have to continuously keep cooling themselves down? Like you know, is it just a, a thing where they don't like the heat? Um, so every so often they have to go for an ice bath. Maybe, maybe. I was suspecting it was a like a one time thing to acclimate into the body. If but... it is something they have to keep doing every so often, like every couple of days, it's very reminiscent, bizarrely, of a uh, Universal Soldier. If anyone's seen that, <laughs> they, right, had to, okay. they had to cool themselves down every couple of days, uh, or the mm. body would overheat. So I don't know. So <laughs> what made me think of. Uh, well, it's, uh, some interesting mechanics are coming into play. Sure, sure. Yeah, those rules. They're setting up rules. All, all the teams are investigating things, and the boys at the end of this episode have kind of got a reason to investigate as well. Because yeah. so. that's the thing. The show is not... It's not a and d game anymore, like it was in the first season. Yeah. But it's kind of kept those those rules and uh, the, the mechanics kind of in play. Like, we're still learning that for, for this season. There are new rules. There are new mechanics. They're not, it's not forgetting that route, the, 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 where the show come from, even though... The characters have moved on for the most part yeah but arguably i think this one's more defined in season two wasn't that no we have this we have this body snatchers kind of yeah. style that we're, we're doing it arguably a little bit of the thing um as it well it's kind of a, a cross between them isn't it yeah so no i really dug this episode like i was really into this one yeah this might be my favorite of the three so far yeah everything's just firing all cylinders the characters are all clicking um even the i think definitively the least interesting characters of nancy and, and jonathan even they had a couple of fun moments where she's just so peppy to go and do the thing that yeah yeah you know, so yeah um no i i i i have nothing but kind things to say about this i actually just something i really like i liked uh ellen max and their they're not, not essentially matching but different colored raincoats oh sure yeah it was just i don't know it was like a really nice visual cue when they were riding in the bike and you could just see them it was like oh there they are yeah so it's a little superhero detective outfits, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. No. Yeah. Um, just one of those little visual touches. There's the colourful raincoats, I guess. Not that you can't get them now, but you think of colourful clothes when you think of these. Yeah. I think raincoats are the exception where I still think of them in bright colours because I think typically people buy them because you know it's it's dark out often oh, when sure, it rains yeah. right so it gives you that visibility so like yellow is a really common color for, for raincoats i think absolutely but sometimes you do get your uh your unbreakable style dark green or uh, i've got a gray one myself yeah yeah so it's just not uncommon to have a dark one either it's not no but i i don't feel surprised when i see you know colorful ones i mean hell you think of a yellow raincoat like in the rain you think of it right you think of little georgie which was set in the sure. 80s as well so yeah um, also had one of these idiots in it, didn't it? it had uh, Will Wolfhard was in there. I did, yeah. So there you go. Uh, there you go. That's the case of the missing lifeguard. Um, best episode of the season so far. So looking forward to episode four. Uh, we'll be getting to these as quick as we can because I really want to watch more of it. So uh, let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. You can like and subscribe and all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here, you can do that by rating is and giving a good review on your podcast app on the uh the netflix audio reviews or netflix original reviews uh, audio feed on apple podcasts or wherever you can support us financially uh by going to patreon.com slash mail tv where you can support us for as little as one dollar per month and get some bonuses extras uh, some stuff early uh, all that kind of thing voting rates and so on and so on 
Uh, you can also check out other content we're doing. Um, we're doing a different bunch of different shows right now. We just finished Dark Season 2. Uh, weekly right now we have Legion, Handmaid's Tale, uh, Big Little Lies, all ongoing. Um, plus there's some classic shows. We've got classic episodes of Star Trek just about to come back. Uh, me and Tara do classic episodes of Twilight Zone. So a lot of, you know, sort of s- a p- similar appealing content uh, to Stranger Things, I guess is what I'm saying uh in that sense so uh yeah so thank you very much once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla